Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ross Foreman. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media teleconference. We have a uh, slightly different format than we've done in the past. Uh, we have two special guests talking about two yes. different topics. First, I'd uh, like to welcome everybody, Josh Matthews. Welcome to the teleconference. Thanks, Ross. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll open it up to questions here in a second, but I just want to start by saying um, yesterday was a huge day for us as we launched the Global Wrestling Network worldwide and uh, a proud day for everyone that's worked so hard on this project for the past year, year and a half as we finally uh, got it up and going yesterday and uh, listened to all the feedback from social media talked last night it was a very long work day for all of us but uh we're very confident that it's going to be uh exactly what we envisioned when everyone got this thing going um back when the idea was started so at that point i will open it up to you guys for questions we also have gail kim of course six-time knockouts champion on the call however for the first 10 minutes i ask that any questions be directed towards josh about the network so please uh, we will get to Gail momentarily, but first we're going to talk about the uh, the network. So I'm going to open it up for questions for Josh here. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star 6. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. You may now ask your question. Hello, Mr. Matthews. This is uh, Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations on uh, the network, and uh, we're all really excited about it, and uh, we have a lot of questions, I'm sure. But one of the questions I wanted to know right off the top, will we be able to stream live Impact shows, or will we be able to watch these shows directly after Impact goes off air? Uh, hey, Josh, start over again. I, I had you muted there. Okay, um... There'll be a delay in most territories and most countries. Um, it's going to be roughly 10 days for everyone, um, you, you know, worldwide. You can pretty much count as that being the benchmark for how far you'll be able to see episodes of Impact. I think late last night they added almost all of 2017. Um, maybe not last week or the week before, but most of 2017 has been added. Muted. Uh, this is uh, BQ from the Impact Lounge. My question for you, Josh, um, I know that the Global Wrestling Network is worldwide. I've been contacted by a couple of people from other countries, Africa being one of them, saying they haven't been able to access the network. Is this? Um, are there certain countries that so far don't have the network, or has it been more of an operator error? I think there are a few territories. Am I unmuted, Ross? How does this work? You're good to go, Josh. Okay, thank you. Um, I think there might be a few territories that haven't been uh, turned on yet, um, but uh, as it relates to like specific places in Africa, I would have to check and uh, and get back to you guys. But I think that you know, as it relates, it's worldwide, but there might be a few territories that that haven't gotten it yet. Hi, Josh. This is uh, Nick Houseman from WrestleZone dot com. Uh, thank you for taking the call. Uh, first of all, um, and second of all, you know. This is a really unique platform, and obviously comparisons are going to be made to the WWE Network, and they provide a lot of original shows, right? Uh, do you have any ideas, any ideas outside of the archives, what kind of original-type content you might want to bring to Global Wrestling Network? Well, you have to remember that when you say original programming, there was I, I was there for the launch of the WWE Network, and there was going to be a ton of original programming, daily shows and raw pre-shows and post-shows, and that got scaled back pretty quickly. So I think you can kind of learn from their, you know, not that they made a whole lot of mistakes, but you can learn from the one or two mistakes that they did make as it relates to original programming. I have been pushing for original programming on GWN, and I think you'll get some, but it's just a matter of uh, a strategic approach to what those are going to be. Hi, Josh. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time here today. This is uh, Michael Melkor, also with the GorillaPosition.com. I had seen in the news release that there were, um, of course, a lot of the Impact Library is going to be there, but there are also some other promotions uh, like Border City Wrestling is involved. At, this, at the outset, at the launch of the network, what all um, content, not just from Impact, but from other promotions, is going to be available? 
Well, right now, like you said, you've got Border City, and I think there's some stuff from Smash that's on there right now. And, it, you know, it's just working with our partners, working with, you know, Pro Wrestling Noah, AAA, Crash, um, you know, everyone that we've talked to as it relates to adding their libraries to the platform. So I think every month or every few months you're going to see, you know, an influx of, of new programming, um, independent wrestling, classic wrestling, things like that, that, you know, that aren't owned by the WWE Network. This truly is, you know, the alternative wrestling network for what's not on their platform hopefully will be on our platform. Hi, Josh. This is John from ImpactAsylum.net. And our viewers are asking when we'll get to see the Destination America years and the Spike years, as well as will we get treated to the Rink of King Cub work as well? Yeah, I think that's just a matter of time, a matter of when all those things get uploaded. Um, I mean, last night, 2017, wasn't uploaded, and then it was up, you know, a little while later. So I think it's just a matter of feeding the beast and loading all of these things Um and I'm super excited to see the Destination America and Pop stuff, too, because I think that when we left Spike, um, you know, a lot of people didn't get to see what Impact was doing during those years. So it's a, it's a good time to, to sign up, get the app, and, uh, and see all those things that you may have missed. Hi, Josh. This is Graham Matthews, Nimrod.com. My question for you would be, uh, will the Global Wrestling Network ever evolve to the point, this might be a little later down the line, where pay-per-views will air exclusively live there in the future, similar to the WWE yeah. Network? Well, it's an interesting topic, and, and I wish I had more time to talk to you about my thoughts on pay-per-view versus just strictly streaming. I think that WWE has gone back and now has offered some pay-per-views available you know, on their televisions through their cable providers or satellite providers. Um, I don't know if we'll ever go exclusive. Um, I think that I can confidently say that Bound for Glory will be available on the app, um, but I still think that you have to work with your television partners, your cable partners, you know, your direct TVs, uh, dish networks, and not upset them by pulling everything. You know, they've been good partners to us over the years. You know, One Night Only airs every month on pay-per-view, so I don't know if you would want to take uh, the pay-per-views away from them. Um, I think that, you know, you, you just work different deals out. Hi, Josh. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. Um, my question was the timing of doing this. Uh, I know Flow Slam has had some problems and, and, and you know, the, some other streaming services have. Uh, what made you decide this was the right time to launch this? Sorry, you broke up there for a second. Is it just the, the, the timing of the launch? Yeah, well, what made uh, you guys decide that this was a good time to uh, add a streaming service? I think it was ready to go. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being candid with you, I mean, it was just one of those deals where, you know, we knew we wanted to do it. Um, our president, Ed Nordal, knew that he wanted to do this service, and, you know, he needed to talk to, you know, the different partners, and then, you know, you got to work with, there's so much that goes into this that I've learned along the way. You know, you have to work with people that build the app, and then you have to test it, and then you have to make sure that it's right. And then, you know, this is a, a process that's been going on for, for some time. It, it could have launched back in August. was it ready. So, you know, now it's ready and up and going, and, and the demand is there. We saw that last night on social media, and the numbers that we got today, um, everyone's super excited. And it's just one of those things where I mentioned the last time I did a round of media, we got knocked down that day from Sports Illustrated for no reason and now here we are launching a worldwide app today. Hi, Josh. David Dunn here with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Um, you've sort of touched on it already, but just wondering about the delay for new pay-per-view events to be uploaded to the network. You said there's 10 days before most impact programming will be up. What sort of a delay are we looking at before like this year's Bound for Glory, hypothetically, would be available in the content? It's a good question. Um, I guess it would depend on where you are in the world. Um, you know, I know Ron Fighting is planning on airing Bound for Glory in Germany live, which would be like 2 a.m. Um, Spike UK is probably going to air the next day, which would be Monday. And I'm probably telling you guys things that I shouldn't, but you guys know me. I'm pretty open. Um, you know, so it just depends on where you are in the world as it relates to when you'll get DFG on the app.
Title Match Wrestling Reporter Andre Corbeil. Now, Gail Kim, you've had a storied, legendary career, and let's actually, say... Andre, I'm going to cut you off there for a second. We're going to hold off on Gail questions. We're going to wrap it up with Josh. So, uh, if you want to get back in queue uh, momentarily, when we bring uh, Gail on on the call. Jim Varsalo, MiamiHerald.com. Josh, the price point for it, what was the decision-making process for what you all wanted to charge for this? I wasn't in the room when they came up with seven ninety nine, but I think it's a great price point. I don't think that you can go higher than nine ninety nine. I think WWE set the price point for a model like this because they were first to market. Um, you know, Netflix is what eleven dollars or something like that a month right now and you know netflix has a retention of like 97 percent a month they just continue to roll customers over every single month and you guys have to remember that retention is a big deal um i don't know what WWE's retention rate is but i think 7.99 is a great price point for this um especially if you're in a territory that doesn't get impact right now you know 10 day delay to you doesn't mean anything because you weren't getting it in the past and if you are in a place where you get impact you're going to get you know, like you've seen on the promos, um, original content, all the old classic episodes, and, you know, it's right there at, at, at your fingertips. Hey, Josh, uh, this is Riju from Sportskira here. Um, uh, my question isn't directly re- uh, related to the network, but I wanted your thoughts on the passing of Bobby Heenan and Lance Russell and what they meant to you as an announcer. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'll be quick. Um, I know you guys are waiting to... Gail, um, you know, it, it, it saddened, but, you know, these guys had long lives and, and illustrious lives and amazing lives and amazing careers, um, you know, so, so you're sad to hear the passing of them, but then, you know, you think about what they did in their lives and, you know, the incredible legacies that they built, and you can sort of celebrate those legacies, um, you, you know, with the passing of those guys. So uh, a, a loss for sure to the wrestling world, but, um, you know, two lives that uh, were lived to their fullest. All righty, Josh, I appreciate your time so much. Any final thought about the network? You know, I think that, you know, right now is the time to go get it, guys. It's a free 30-day trial that's available right now. Um, you know, we're test driving this thing, and we're pushing it as hard as we can. And um, I think I had no less than 200 emails yesterday with between people in the company and up in Canada trying to make sure that this is working uh, as as great as it can for all of you. So, again, someone said congratulations to me. It's not a congratulations to me. It's a congratulations to our fans the legacy, the 16 years that this company has built. So I thank you guys. Enjoy Bound for Glory on November the 5th. And, uh, Ross, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Perfect. Josh. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. House champion, Gail Kim, get ready to go back to your native country. Uh, My native what country, your, yeah. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I'm really excited because I actually haven't, I don't even remember the last time I was in Canada wrestling, to be honest. It's been that long. Um, so it's it's actually, I'm relieved that I get to wrestle there before my retirement. Well, before we open up for questions, Gail, uh, congratulations. I'd, I'd like you to share with everybody what happened yesterday to you. <laughs> Yesterday, I officially became a dual citizen. I waited a long time uh, to get my citizenship here. Uh, a lot of people asked me why I took so long, and I had to be honest, and I said it was kind of laziness. <laughs> I always just thought I'll do it next year, and next year, and then as soon as Donald Trump became president, I said I better do it now. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I got it yesterday. It's official. Well, congratulations. We'll uh, be sure to celebrate up in uh Canada. Canada, definitely. All right. Well, we can open up for questions. Uh, if you have questions for Gail Kim at this point, uh, feel free to star six. Hi, Gail. It's James from the Wrestling Epicenter. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I guess my hey, question James. is, as we're all, hey, good to talk to you. Uh, so disappointed to hear that you're calling it a career. I guess my, I wanted to find out if or what caused you to make that decision? And if so far as your dates approaching towards the end of the road, yeah. if you've any yeah. second thoughts about it? Uh, no, I haven't had second thoughts about it. Cause uh, to be honest, it was a long uh, time coming, not a long time coming. I, I, I would say that a lot of my close friends were kind of planting the seed uh, of the idea in my head only because 
you know, realistically, come on, I've been doing it 17, like next year would be 18 years. And, um, I'm turning 41 in February. Um, and for my friends who care about me, who are in the business, they were kind of like, think, they were thinking, you know, you need to plan ahead and you want to go out the right way. And they all knew that I always said that I wanted to retire on top in terms of uh, my performance and because of my back uh, being the way it is, I just, I just knew realistically it was getting to that point. And I would say before I decided, it was probably being talked about within my close circle of family and friends for about a good year. And I wasn't ready then. And I always, you know, for every wrestler, it's it's difficult to leave the business as it is. So I just wanted to be absolutely 100% sure because I didn't want to have any regrets. Before we move on, just a, a quick note to Andre. I didn't mean to cut you off earlier when we were talking to Josh. So if you get back in queue, if I see your uh, your number there, I'll I'll go right to you. Okay. Hi, Gail. This is BQ with the Impact Lounge. First, first of all, congratulations on the dual citizenship. Um, regarding your backstage role with the company, this is one of the mm-hmm. deepest knockouts rosters in the last couple of years to the point that some of the ladies like MJ Jenkins, Alicia Edwards, and even to a point, Ava Story have not been highly featured on television. What would you say to those girls or what have you said to them um, maybe to help them keep their spirits up in that uh, situation? Right, right, absolutely. I mean, I, the one thing that I, I do communicate with all the girls um, pr- very often, I want them to know that uh, – they should have a relationship with me where they can feel comfortable to talk about anything, whether it's frustrations, happiness, uh, learning, anything. I just want them to feel comfortable to say their thoughts because I'm a very, they all know me now and they know my personality. I'm a very direct person. What you see is what you get with me. And um, whether that's criticism, whether that's positive reinforcement, whatever it is. And I told them, I said, just from my experience of being in this business so long, the one thing that I have learned looking back is that this business is all about patience. Uh, it really, truly is. And, and, and I get it because I've, I've been in their shoes, all of their shoes at one point or another. And, you know, I think for everybody, they want it now. You know, there's not a lot of patience in that. But um, I think and, – and I've told them and been honest about what they need to work on and – I feel like once they, yes, they have been seen on television, for example, let's take an MJ, for example. She's under contract. Uh, she hasn't officially debuted. She's done a couple of things for us. But now I feel like with a good break, um, I've told her, I'm like, let's do it right. And, you know, you only have one chance to make a great, great impression once you re-debut because she did an all-girls pay-per-view and kind of got thrown in the mix with uh, Ava and uh, herself and um, Alicia as well. And I feel like now they all have that one chance to shine individually and we want to do it right. So it is all about patience. It is all about progression and being ready. And um, they're all very positive in their spirit. Um, So, I think once they get to the point of frustration, we can we can deal with that. But like I said, it's all about patience and hard work. Thank you. Title match wrestling reporter, Gail. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Pauline, you're from Canada Day. Hey. I can I can hear I can hear the accent. <laughs> Kenya, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've had an unprecedented uh, story career. You're nearing seven knockouts wins if you surpass Angelina Love at Bound for Glory. Now, my question is, who on the knockouts roster following that win, if you do, would you want to pass the torch to before you retire? And whom on the knockouts roster do you think is most deserving of that um, well, I'm not sure when my very last match will be, but I can answer the second part of your questions. I I feel like there's a lot of strong girls who have been there um, in the past couple months to up till recently. Um, 
I feel like they all ha- should be given a chance in terms of, for example, Ali. She's been wrestling for a really long time, a fellow Canadian, really talented. She's been more of a character these days, um, but I feel like she's going to start transitioning to show what she can really do in the ring. Uh, so she's one. Uh, another fellow Canadian that has just joined the roster was Taya. And I, I have to tell you, I mean, I had heard so much about her beforehand. And then to meet her and to see what she does in the ring, and she's just polished. She's got, this is the best way to describe her. When I saw her do her entrance, I was blown away, and I said, she's a star. And that's all I have to say about that. She's a star, and I feel like she's the future. Hi, Gail. This is John with ImpactAsylum.net. Uh, You've left a heck of a mark on the wrestling industry and particularly women's wrestling. And on behalf of all fans everywhere, thank you for that. Do you have any plans to continue to work with Impact behind the scenes to extend that legacy into the distant future? Yes. So uh, right now I'm kind of been transitioning uh, behind the scenes as well. So I've already started uh, working with the girls and, I really, truly love that role. And I'll be honest, the very first time I got thrown into it, I remember my husband was there at backstage and I turned to him and I said, oh my goodness, I, I'm, I'm not getting the same feeling as when I'm out there. And he said, of course, you're not going to get the same feeling. It's not the same as performing. And uh, once I got over that hump, which was very quick, <laughs> um, I just, I really embraced the role and I love Even throughout all my years in wrestling, my favorite part was creating, uh, creating matches and being innovative and being, um, you know, just thinking outside the box. So I hope that um, now that I can't do the in-ring part after I retire, I hope that I can create a legacy um, for them and to help build this division and be the best in the world. Hi, doing, Gail. It's John Powell from Slam Wrestling in Toronto. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Fine, thank you. I've got a three-part question for you. Um, how does it feel to have the opportunity to compete and possibly win the title in Canada? Who do you think is your biggest threat in the match? And do you feel any extra added pressure because you're coming back to your home country, Canada? Okay, so the first question, let's go back to the first question. You said... Um, um, Can you repeat it? Yeah, so what 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 does it feel like to compete in your home country for the belt? Oh, yeah. I honestly because I had made that decision to retire, um I was my original plans because I made the decision probably well over a year ago. I think it was 2 years ago to be honest. Um, I yeah. had originally planned to retire in the UK because we were doing the UK tours every January. Um and then uh, we stopped doing them. So I was kind of disappointed because I really wanted to be in front of those fans. And now, I mean, I didn't even think Canada would be a possibility. And so this kind of just all fell into place perfectly for me, I felt like. Um, it's a dream come true to be able to wrestle in Canada again. And not just that, at a very meaningful uh, night, which is found for glory, and it's actually the 10 year anniversary of our knockout title. So, um, for me to be able to perform, I'm going to have some friends drive up from Toronto, my hometown, and uh, for me to be able to perform in front of my uh, my friends and family, uh, that's what's most important. And the Canadian fans who I haven't seen for years, so I just know that they're going to be amazing as they always are, and um, I- I'm. I really just want to blow them away, and we want to steal the show that night. You may now ask your question. And the second part of the question. Oh, sorry. Oh, Big Ray, hold hold on one second. Uh, uh, Oh, and then the second part of the question that I remember is who's going to be my uh, uh, person that I'm going to be looking out for. And, uh, you know, you can't count any of the girls out. With Taryn, yes, she just came back, but... Her and I have a really um, deep history, and I know she's not afraid to, you know, take her wrestling game to another level. And then 
the other two girls, I absolutely, like I said, uh, have so much deep respect for because these girls are the ones that are coming through. This is the new generation, and they're going to be very hungry, and they want to prove themselves. So you just never know in a four-way match, uh, anybody can take it at that point. Hey, John, I apologize. I cut you off a little early there. Okay. Uh, but Go I, ahead. I think, uh, Gail, I think his third question was, how much pressure do you feel uh, going into this in your home country uh, oh. as a Hall of Famer? Right. I feel like um, I would. I have the same pressure all the time. Uh, even after all these years, and I'm very satisfied with my career, obviously, um, it's always the same pressure. I always want to be the best on the show. I want to always be as good as the guys, if not better, um, and I want to steal the show. So for me, the pressure is equally the same, whether I'm in the impact zone in Universal, Orlando, or Toronto, Ottawa, or the UK, anywhere. Uh, I put the same amount of pressure on myself. I'm a perfectionist. Big Ray, go ahead. It's all you. Thank you, sir. Well, first and foremost, I have to say that it's an pl absolute pleasure, Gail, to speak to you. Uh, you know, you I, I've, I've spoken to, to numerous people who have had interactions with you, and not only are you just, uh, from what I've heard, a class act, but just a good person all around. Uh, a true icon. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's true, Gail. I, I hear nothing but good <laughs> things about you, and that, that's the honest truth. And, um, you know, a, a revolutionary, a, a, an icon. I mean, you were one of the very first women that wrestled that we said, you know what, she's not just a great woman's wrestler, she's a great wrestler. And that is amazing. And I want to thank you for all the years that you've provided the amazing action that we've seen in various rings all over the world thank you so much but that's not my question gail thank you um, <laughs> thank you i appreciate it okay we'll move on big ray you're done no i'm just kidding. No. oh ross <laughs> i've been waiting for this for a long time uh first listen you know i've been working at one wrestling.com for a long time we've we've been uh, big fans of yours and you know over the last this question is actually not about you it's about your very, okay. your very handsome and very talented husband, Mr. Chef Irvine okay. or Chef Irvine. Now, yeah. with all, now, yeah. has this gentleman ever wanted had the itch to get in the ring? I mean, the guy is huge. He's in shape. <laughs> I mean, he's 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 you know he has the look, as they say. Has he ever wanted to get yeah. in the ring and maybe yeah. maybe do a mixed tag with you? And my second and last question yeah. is. Yeah. What's breakfast like with you guys? I mean, this guy is is a class A world renowned chef. I mean, do you even go to a restaurant or anything like that? You wouldn't even oh, have to step gosh. out. Okay, you're gonna be surprised by both answers. I think um, the first part is that many people have asked. Yes, they're like, oh, he looks the part, and um, would he? You know, he obviously is an entertainer as well. I would say definitely he loves going into heel mode um, when he is asked to maybe make a few comments backstage and everything like that. Uh, so he has fun with the character part of it. But I will definitely say when it comes to the in-ring part of it, he, from just being around me and watching shows and knowing the guys, he respects us too, you know, uh, so greatly. And he, he knows he would never step inside the ring because he respects what we do and how long it takes to become good. And uh, he's just honestly a Pussycat. If I was playing around with him, he would probably say, "Ow, oh, Gail, you hurt me." You know, so it's it's pretty funny because I'm probably um, when he's tough, but I think I'm tougher <laughs> when it comes to taking a little bit of a beat down. Um, and then the second part of the question in terms of food, it's it's funny because a lot of people always say, you know, you must eat like a queen and everything, and I do when he cooks, but over the course of almost nine years, he's probably cooked maybe ten times because we're never home. We travel a lot. And for breakfast, I can be honest, we majority of the time it's Starbucks and we get the same thing and it's like egg white bites or egg bites and oatmeal and a coffee. <laughs> and then the rest of the time, it's pretty standard. Uh, we don't do anything really fancy. We like eggs and toast. <laughs> So, you know, not exciting for you guys, but um, it's we just like good food, you know, and uh, I always tell the story of when we went on our honeymoon and uh, everyone always has the 
uh, impression that we need to eat at five-star restaurants and uh, fancy schmancy places. And to be honest, we had that the first night, and I told him after that, I said, I don't want this. I want to cancel all our reservations, go hit all the local spots, and just get good food. And that's what we do um, most of the time. We just He leaves it up to me where to eat, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. Muted. Hi, Gail. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Uh, I wanted to speak to you about your... (laughs) Exotic, (laughs) right? Yeah. Um, I want to speak about your Hall of Fame induction. Obviously, for most pro wrestlers, uh, going into the Hall of Fame is something that happens at the end of their career. Uh... Yeah. Not the case in your situation. So how did you feel to be inducted into the Hall of Fame as an active competitor? And then what's it like going out there nowadays and wrestling, knowing that you, you're you adding to your legacy and you've already had a Hall of Fame career? Right. Um, well, I think in our company, there most of them that were inducted were still active. Uh, I always joked around that uh, once that happened, that was kind of my sign to retire. (laughs) But I had already decided that before then anyways. Um, So it was truly almost the icing on the cake. And I've always said that meant a lot to me because it's it's not only just fan recognition, but it's um, the recognition from your peers and from your company. And that means a lot to me because, those are the people I work for. So they get to see a little bit more uh, from me, not just the matches, but the work that goes into the matches behind the scenes. And um, so that was kind of, I would say the last thing where, well, actually it's not the last thing because I do want to win the title at Brown Glory, but um, that was kind of the last thing where I said, you know what, I can walk away tomorrow and, feel very satisfied with how my career went and um, I'm extremely proud Hey Gail Ryan from the gorilla position.com uh, first of all thanks for your time with us today um, listening to you speak uh, we've seen a lot of ladies step up and become color commentators and of course there's always been the backstage role I'm just wondering, uh, would you think about continuing an on-air role as a commentator or possibly a uh-huh. manager? I know you're going to continue your backstage role with the company. Yeah. Just wondering well, if you might stay on screen with us. Right. Um, I mean, if the company asked me to do that, I, of course I would. Um, I, but, you know, my strength has always been in the ring in terms of wrestling. Um, but I am comfortable now, obviously, with all aspects of the game and so i wouldn't say no uh, i just like i said can't continue physically um for much longer <laughs> that's it hey gail the, this is ritu from sports kid in india i've been a hi. fan for many years hi uh we have uh, we have all been fans for a long time thank you for so many years of entertainment thank you. uh so uh my, uh, you're welcome. Uh, so my question is, do you think what is being described worldwide as the women's revolution is something that began with the knockouts and something that the knockouts don't get enough credit for? Oh, yeah. Um, I've spoken about this before, and, you know, everyone has their opinion in terms of, um, you know, there's so many points where there was uh, women's wrestling that was strong. You know, when I started with WWE, uh, they had a strong women's division, but I kind of started, uh, what I was referring to when I talked about the impacts, uh, knockouts revolution is because at the time that we did it, there was no women's wrestling, uh, on television that was at the forefront. It was literally women's wrestling was dead for a while. And it was very frustrating for me in terms of, cause I always loved the sport of wrestling. So for me to sit back and I, I did the manager thing for a, over a year and uh, at first I was just, you know, patient and uh, happy to be back in a company where I felt passion again. But then after a while, you know, it, it just felt like I was wasting my time and I just didn't want to waste my talent and uh, because of, 
you know, what happened to me previously, I just felt like time was ticking. And, and so impact gave us that opportunity and pretty much has never stopped. So I feel like sometimes, yeah, they don't get the credit that they deserve because they've, oh, they started this women's wrestling movement and it's never stopped. We've gone through ups and downs and of course rebuilding stages, but it's never stopped and they've always believed in the women. And that's why I've always felt very loyal to this company It's because they gave us uh, a chance. And even if we disappointed at times, cause we're not perfect, uh, they just kept rolling with it. And so uh, if we have, contributed to the whole big picture of women's wrestling today, then I'm very happy. Hey, Gail, this is Brent Matthews, Rimbo.com. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, having won your first knockouts championship at Bound for Glory 10 years ago, obviously there's been a lot of talk in recent months of the women one day headlining WrestleMania. Do you think at one point we could see the women headline a future Bound for Glory pay-per-view? Yeah, I mean, I would hope so. Uh, That would be a very big deal. Um, I think that I would love to see Impact do it first. (laughs) Uh, They've done a lot of firsts for the women, so uh, I could definitely see that happening. That's definitely a goal. I feel like you know, lately, I feel like there's a lot of uh, female um, topics happening in the news today, especially, you know, you just see this uh, sexual assault thing. And um, it's just made me realize at times that, yes, there's a women's revolution going um, right now, and it's getting better for the women. But I feel like it still could go much faster. It could still happen on a bigger scale. And I feel like, yes, it's happening, but it's not still at the point where we want it to be. And things like main eventing a pay-per-view, that's a first step towards it. So I would love to see that happen, and I would love to see it happen with an impact uh, one day soon. <laughs> Hi, Gail. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. Hi. Um, Hi, I kind of picking back on that women's revolution um, question. Um, I know a lot of fans feel like your feud with Awesome Kong was kind of what led to the women's revolution as we know as we see it today. And uh, yeah. at that time, you also had uh, the beautiful people, all this all this amazing stuff going on uh, in the women's division in TNA. Uh, what are what do you recall about that period? And and was it difficult to leave during that time? Oh, well, I left probably, um, let's say, two, almost two years after that time. So, yeah, it was a very difficult time for me. But uh, touching back on where you originally started, sorry, uh, it was great because you just never know what will happen when a company brings in 10 girls all at once. Um, it can probably get ugly in some instances, <laughs> but... It was just this magical thing that happened. I mean, all the girls just kind of clicked and had their own personality or character. And um, you saw girls from Awesome Kong to Shelly Martinez with LAX and myself and Jackie Moore and Roxy Laveau. It was just a wide, vast range, uh, array of characters. So it was it was nice to see. And they all and we all had our different wrestling styles. Um, what was the second part of the question? Sorry, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, that was that was pretty much it. Just, just, just that period in the in the knockouts division and, and oh, how, how it was it? Yeah, it was just it was hard to leave at that time. Um, that was I literally bawled my eyes uh, eyes out because I didn't want to leave. It was um, just a business decision at that point, and um, I had talked to every single person in the office, and they understood my decision. And um, hey, I ended up back home though, and so it all worked out. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Hi. My question is. Hi. Uh, is there another knockout that you think deserves to be in the Impact Hall of Fame? And like first thought that comes to your mind. Thanks. Oh, well, the first thought that comes to my mind, obviously, is Awesome Kong. Um, for I have nothing but the deepest respect for her. And, you know, we just had uh, an unbelievable 
chemistry, unbelievable deep respect for one another, and uh, to this day. And she was my partner throughout that feud that everybody still to this day uh, will come up to me, and fans will come up to me at uh, signings. And sometimes I think back and think, wow, that was 10 years ago. And um, for the fact that fans still love it and remember it, uh, that's what's special to both of us. Hey, Gail, this is Ray Matthews, Zumo.com again. Uh, was there anyone that you Hi. wished you could have worked with that you didn't have the chance to during your time at Impact? And who have been your favorite opponents, aside from just Austin Kong? Oh, okay. Well, I worked with her, so I was <laughs> lucky. Yeah, the, you know, there's a good handful of girls that um, I wish I could have worked with. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, you always want to have a deeper feud with people because these days wrestling moves so fast and the storylines are – um, so quick. So I think the main thing is, of course, there's girls I've always wanted to wrestle and haven't had the chance to wrestle in the ring with, but that's mostly because we might be not in the same company at the same time. But, um, I think the main thing for me is the two most, um, personal feuds for me were Austin Kong and Taryn Terrell. And I believe the key to success with both of them was because the feuds were basically six months long and they took their time with it. So I think for me, it's more about um, maybe having a more meaningful feud with some of the girls I've wrestled because it, they're just so talented. You know, I could have had uh, a nice meaningful feud with Mickey James at the time. And um, uh, cause I mean, she's amazing. So we could have made it something bigger uh, I think wrestling in general, all across the board, just needs to take time with their storylines now. Hey, Gail, uh, Riju from Sportskira again. Uh, what do you think of Ro Hi again? Uh, what do you think of Rosemary's success in the division and the fact that she's so widely popular now? And uh, yeah. what did you think of what happened between her and Sexy Star? The whole controversial. Uh, thing that happened. Right. You have a take on it. Thank you. Um, uh, Rosemary, I, I love her. I just think number one, she's just well-rounded in every way. She's polished. That's the word I use for girls. That you know, just I feel like they're at the point. Of course, you can always learn. I still learn to this day, and I'm retiring. But um, she's just polished in her character, her promo work, her in-ring work. She's just very good. Um, so. I love that she's different. I love that she has a strong character and she really embraces it. Um, in terms of what happened with her and Sexy Star, I mean, it, whether it was her or it could be anyone, a male wrestler, a female wrestler, um, that's just something you, you just, you don't do. It's a, a well-known um, unwritten law. You need to take care of your partner in the ring and trust one another uh, because we literally put our lives in each other's hands. It's, it's you know, wrestling is not something that you have to be trained and you have to be smart and you have to be careful and uh, take care of the person you're wrestling with. So it, it at the time, um, and obviously now I still stand by everything we've said about it and I hope that Hopefully, she learned from her lesson. I, I, I don't know what's going on with her right now, but um, I lost a lot of respect for her. <laughs> That's for sure. You just don't do that. You may now ask your question. Hey, Gail. It's Big Ray from OneWrestling.com again. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I wanted to give you a chance to say hi back, just in case. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so my question to you is, first and foremost, have you ever been or have you ever had the opportunity? And can you share a story of having, let's say, a quote unquote cringe worthy match with, let's say, an up and coming female talent? And then, you know, you kind of pulled her aside <laughs> and you gave her some advice. And from that point, you see you saw her grow into something special or has someone ever pulled you aside and maybe, you know, done the same for you? And and the last thing is, you know, you're in your early 20s. Why are you retiring? Yeah, right? I wish. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wish my body at least felt like it was in my early 20s. <laughs> I miss that. Um, 
uh, I feel like there was no one specific girl that um, maybe I didn't have a, a defining moment, I guess you could say. Molly was the one that gave me my opportunity. Molly was the one that I I copied in terms of, you know, her beliefs and morals in this business. I don't believe in having to backstab anyone. And, uh, you know, I always just wanted to be a good person and hope that my hard work and talent paid off in some way. Um, in terms of, you know, of course I've had cringeworthy matches. I mean, everyone has at some point in their career. I've had some on live television. Um, so it wasn't necessarily uh, with a green girl or anything like that. I always, I've never had to really, I think I just help girls in general, whether I watch their matches or wrestle them. I just try to give back what I've been given. And, um, you know, I had, for example, Dawn Marie, when I started in the business, she, I was just talking about her with, uh, actually Miss, Missy Hyatt. I just saw her last weekend and she said, it was the first time I met Missy Hyatt and she said, Don Marie and I just spoke and she spoke very highly of you. And I said, you know, I love Don because when I got into WWE and I was thrown to the wolves and really didn't know anybody and I was so green, she was one of those girls that kind of showed me the ropes in the business aspect of it. You know, not necessarily in the ring. She did um, as well in the ring, but mostly, you know, about handling yourself backstage and how to handle uh, yourself and conduct yourself within the company. So she helped me a lot in that regard. Uh, everyone has given me a little piece or a little lesson, I would say, along the way. Uh, Gail, this is uh, BQ from the Impact Lounge again. What are your thoughts on uh, how Sienna has carried herself as the Knockouts champion? And the second part of that is how special do you think your match can be at Bound for Glory that you know features two knockouts who are kind of representing the future and then two, which don't take offense here, but for the sake of argument, <laughs> two representing the past the a little bit. experience. The experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I actually, I love the aspect that we have two uh, that represent the future and then two that represent the past of the uh, knockouts uh, division. It's kind of uh, funny because I feel like we've all of a sudden taken this turn when Taryn came back when Taya joined the roster. It was like this new um, invigoration into the knockouts division. And I feel like now we have a really, really solid division. And um, uh, I just, I feel like it's a good balance. And I think it gives the fans a fresh take on things. And um, because, you know, throughout the last couple of years, I would say a lot of fans were like, we need more knockouts, we need more knockouts. And um, uh, fans these days get bored very quickly. <laughs> so I think lately in the last couple of weeks, we've given them some stuff that, you know, we had a six-girl tag, and it was um, Taya, myself, uh, Taryn, Rosemary, Allie, and Sienna. And everybody was just so excited. I would say it was like the most response we've gotten in a long time. And I think people are just happy to see a solid group and a diverse group. And the first part of the question, how do you think Sienna is carrying herself as a knockout champion? Oh, oh, in real life or? <laughs> However you I mean, want well, to answer it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, obviously she's, from the minute that I've wrestled her, I, the very first time I wrestled her was on an all girls pay-per-view and she didn't have a contract at the time. And I remember thinking this girl got it. You know, she, she obviously knows what she's doing and has been wrestling a long time. So even though she's like the new generation, she still has a lot of experience behind her. So yeah, in that case, I think that, um, she represents the knockouts very well, but I think it's time for a new champion. <laughs> Thank you. Jim Barcelo, MiamiHerald.com. Gail, you talked about women's wrestling. What do you think is next for women in wrestling, and how do you get there? Well, I would definitely like to see, as someone had just asked earlier about main eventing a pay-per-view, a huge pay-per-view, <clears throat> such as 
SummerSlam, Bound for Glory, WrestleMania. You know, it's one of the major pay-per-views out there for whatever company it is. That would be a huge, huge step for women to show, you know, like Ronda Rousey. Uh, obviously, she may have invented a UFC pay-per-view. So, I mean, why can't we do it? I think there's definitely enough talented women out there that could hold their own in that regard. Um and then the next thing I would say is I would love to see more. This is more behind the scenes and everything because, yes, there's this women's revolution going on. But I'm sorry, women still don't get paid equally to men um, in this business or in entertainment in general. I mean, you see it in Hollywood and it's not any different in wrestling. Um, I would highly doubt that any top girl in a wrestling company gets paid equal to any top guy. So uh, there are many regards in terms of, uh, you know, this women's revolution. It's not just about being used in wrestling. It's got to be all the way around. And I'm a true believer in that. And I'd like to see all those things um, come to fruition uh, at a much quicker rate than it's happening now. Hi, Gail. Andre Corbeil again here. Okay. It's no secret this business is in your blood and your passion for it's endless. So here's my question. You've hinted on the internet and some other types of involvement in the industry. Uh, after you hang up the boots, can you shed some light with myself and the Impact Wrestling fans if you do have that bug to work on the executive side, a.k.a. the other side of the curtain? Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, uh, like I said, I've already started kind of uh, transitioning and uh, I just feel like the transition has been very natural to me. Uh, I've, even before uh, I was working with the girls, I was already technically working with the girls, you know. Um, and I felt like I got to the point where they did seek, you know, um, advice or uh, help. And whether that was in the ring or outside the ring, um, you know, dealing with issues. I just want to be, you know, I never had, when I started in this business, I was thrown to the wolves. And there was um, a few people that would help me here and there. But there are also things that I wish I could have known. And uh, those are the things that I try to help with the, you know, greener girls or girls who have just come into the business and maybe teach them things that, uh came for me at a later time, but maybe I could help them speed the process up and um, learn that way. I feel like it's a natural progression for me, and I, I do want to leave my stamp. Uh, I want to keep on leaving my legacy, uh, whether it's in the ring or outside the ring, in the business. Hello, Gail. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer again. Um, you spoke about enjoying your feuds with Taryn and with Awesome Kong, and I was just thinking now that the Global Wrestling Network is live, uh, people will potentially be able to go back and uh, watch the footage from these things. So is there anything specifically that you'd recommend to, say, perhaps a newer fan of yours and say, hey, go back, check this out, I think you'd like it? Yeah. Um, yeah, because a lot of people when, for example, people who are not wrestling fans at all, I might meet people through my husband at events and they're like, oh, you're a pro wrestler? I'm going to have to Google you. And I always say, don't watch my WWE matches. <laughs> and I always say, go watch some DNA matches. And um, so I would definitely, I would say my top three favorite matches of all time would definitely be uh, with Awesome Kong. I had a no disqualification uh, pay-per-view match. It was final resolution, so I, I'm very proud of that match with her. Um, and, of course, the Taryn, uh, the last knockout standing match, and uh, the uh, ladder match. So, um, there's just a lot of that. All of those matches just came with the perfect build. Uh, we really took our time with all of that, and um, just really proud of them. We have time for a few more questions here. Hey, Gail. Uh, Riju from Sportskira again. So, uh, having come up from OVW, what was your take on Jim Cornette coming to Impact Wrestling as an authority figure? And I was also wondering uh, if you saw the recent standoff between him and Santino and what your take <laughs> was on 
yes, I. Someone actually did show me that video, and for me, it's just hey. Um, I feel like any business is gonna have. It's like almost high school, I guess. You know, you're gonna have your group of friends, and you're gonna have the people you get along with, and the people that you're tight with. Uh, but then at the same time, you might not agree with people. So I don't know their personal matters. I know that I get along with both of them, and I respect both of them. And I've never had an issue with both. I like both individuals. Um, so I don't like to see when two people don't get along that I like. Um, and like I said, it's none of my business. I don't know what exactly happens in there. It's just not for me. I'm, I'm sad that they don't get along. <laughs> if you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. You may now ask your question. Muted. Ryan Bowman from the thegorillaposition.com. Uh, Gail, you said you're going to stay involved in the rest. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Uh, other things, maybe in entertainment, art uh, that you might pursue. And also, do you have any bold predictions for uh, for the pay-per-view coming up? Well, let's see. Well, they've only announced one match, and that was ours, I believe. So my bold prediction for that is, I want to win the knockouts title <laughs> and I am, and you know, if this is one of my last matches, you know that I'm going to, for me, I always go ball to the wall. <laughs> I am always going to try to outperform everybody and um, that's not going to be any different that night. It's going to be actually probably, I'm going to up it at a level because it will be in Canada in front of uh, the Canadian fans and my family and friends. So I'm definitely going to bring my A game that night. Um, and then what was the other question? Oh, uh, outside the company, right? You said, for me, I've always been in my life very much about um, being happy and being passionate about what I do. So, you know, for example, a lot of people always ask, why don't you and your husband do something together, whether it's the travel or food or fitness? And, you know, for both of us, we feel the exact same way. We don't want to just do something to do something. We want to make sure that we're passionate about it because I've been so fortunate to be in this business for this long and to love what I do. I've never felt like I had a job. Uh, I've been paid to do what I love. And that's not going to be any different in terms of what I do next. And um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of personality that if I'm presented something, an opportunity, uh, unless I'm totally against it, I'm not one to turn things down because I can't say no to a challenge. So um, I feel like once one door closes, another one opens and I have a lot of ideas, but I'm the type of person that I don't like to talk about them until they happen because in entertainment, you just, you never know <laughs> things. It's like throwing something against the wall and one out of 10 times it sticks, if not less. So. Well, we have one more question here in queue. We'll get this one okay. out there and then we can wrap it up after this. You may now ask your question. Hey, Gail. Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, one last question. Now that you're going to be retired, is there maybe a secret talent that you have that we're going to see Gail Kim <laughs> unleash on the public when she finally leaves the world of professional wrestling? Oh, boy. I don't know. I've always been just kicking ass for how long now, right? Um... I do have other interests, obviously, I mean, that are obvious to people in terms of fitness and, and food and uh, travel. I mean, that's my life right now. Um, I, I I also do feel like I, I don't have any secret talents, I don't think. I just... I just feel like whatever, like I said in the last question, I just want to be deeply passionate and it could be in anything. It could be, uh, there's been some television things that have been presented and that comes in the form of a lot of things, whether it's fitness, food, health, whatever it is. Um, but I just want to find that one special thing and that I feel strongly about. And I've always been just like with wrestling, the day that I knew I wanted to be a wrestler, I went full force and that's all I had my focus on and that's what I want my next thing to be. Alrighty, Gail, I appreciate your time so much. 
how about a uh, final thought as we wrap uh, today's teleconference up? I just want to thank everyone to taking, uh, for taking the time to talk to me today. And um, Bound for Glory, I'm really looking forward to seeing all the Canadian fans and hope that everyone tunes in. And um, like I said, the girls are going to steal the show. All righty, Gail, I appreciate it very much. A message from media. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback, particularly the good, not just the, uh, you know, across the board, good, bad, and indifferent, about these teleconferences. But I want to make them something that you guys really want. So if there is a talent that you would like on the teleconference, shoot me an email. If there's a theme you'd like, we've done, uh, for instance, we had uh, the uh, X Division roundtable a month or so ago. If there's a theme, let me know. If there's a certain talent you would like back on the teleconference or somebody that we have not had, uh, shoot me an email. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you very much. Gail, have a uh, a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.